Welcome back to the Hard Run Box News Corner. It seems like there's been a fair bit of news this week, which is good because the last few weeks have been rather slow in comparison. Well, perhaps I shouldn't say news because some of the biggest stories to emerge this week are actually rumors relating to major upcoming launches from Intel and Nvidia. So I'll be talking a bit about those and whether they appear legitimate, followed by a selection of genuine news topics. So let's get into it. Over the past few days, it's been hard to escape rumors surrounding Intel's upcoming eight core processors allegedly to be the i9-9900K and i7-9700K. Multiple reports have emerged throughout the week claiming to provide specifications for these chips and there's a few interesting things to come of that. Firstly, these rumors are suggesting the Core i7-9700K will feature eight cores, but just eight threads. In other words, it will not support hyperthreading. This rumor first appeared in a set of specifications posted on Chinese website Kulela, and then a few days later, an i7-9700K appeared in the CSoft Sandra database, also showing a processor with just eight threads. It seems unusual that Intel would make the i7-9700K a part without hyperthreading, considering based Basically, all Core i7 desktop CPUs in the past have included the feature. We'd also end up with a situation where the Core i7-8700K, a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, has more logical cores than the 9700K. Not that it would necessarily perform better than a CPU with 8 physical cores, but it'd be an interesting situation for Intel's lineup. However, it is possible Intel would remove hyperthreading from 9th Gen Core i7 parts to make room for a Core i9 at the top end that does include hyperthreading, as seems to be the case from these rumors. The i9-9900K is alleged to be an 8-core 16-thread CPU, and that would cascade down to 8-core 8-thread Core i7 parts, then 6-core 6-thread Core i5 parts, and so forth. So I guess there would still be that clear difference between each product segment. With two separate sources for this rumor, it seems like this hyper-threading business might be legitimate, though. Of course, with all rumors, we suggest you take it with a grain of salt. What's less clear is the clock speeds these processes will be using. The Kulela post suggests the 9700K will be clocked at a 3.6 gigahertz base and have a max turbo clock of 4.9 gigahertz. And that base clock is also seen in the Sandra listing. We're also looking at 12 megabytes of level three cache. Then the 9900K would come in also at a 3.6 gigahertz base, but then boost up to a maximum of five gigahertz with 16 megabytes of level three cache. Both CPUs apparently have a 95 watt TDP, though that rating tends to be pretty meaningless these days. What makes me question these clock speed figures particularly the turbo clocks, is that the Kulela article also lists the Core i5-9600K as having a 4.6 GHz turbo clock. However, Intel's official documents that leaked the 9600K a couple of weeks ago show the chip is topping out at 4.5 GHz. It's a small discrepancy, but it throws into question the validity of the report. I think the final products will end up being pretty close to what is being reported on here, but an official launch shouldn't be too far away, so let's keep an eye out on this one. The other major rumor from this week surrounded a GTX 1170 benchmark posted on WCCF Tech. This one to me doesn't look right from a number of perspectives, so let's dig into it. The benchmark is a screen photo of a 3D Mark Firestrike score, which is suspicious in itself as it's not an actual screenshot, and the score is seen as 22989, which would put it in GTX 1080 Ti territory. That's not overly surprising considering with Pascal, Nvidia launched the GTX 1070 with 980 Ti level performance. However, it's the specifications that are pretty dubious. The card is listed as having 16 gigabytes of memory, which seems pretty high. The Volta-based Titan V only includes 12 gig of memory, and we know how expensive memory is these days, so doubling the capacity from the GTX 1070 seems not quite right, especially as a lot of today's games don't make full use of 8 gigabytes at this point. Even more suspicious are the clock speeds. The card is listed as pushing up to 2552 megahertz, which is more than 800 megahertz higher than the highest clocked Pascal card, and certainly well above what most Pascal cards will do when overclocked heavily. At this point, it seems certain Nvidia's next-gen cards will be using TSMC's 12 nanometer manufacturing process, and the gains from 16 nanometers used with Pascal to 12 nanometers simply won't give you that sort of clock speed gain. So I'm calling this one fake and I think a lot of other people probably have come to that conclusion by now as well. 
In legitimate NVIDIA GPU news, the company has launched a new bundle to try and push existing Pascal cards out through the door as fast as they can. NVIDIA are offering a free Kingston SSD with eligible purchases of some graphics cards, either a 120 gig model or a 240 gig model depending on the SKU. It appears these bundles are only for the GTX 1050 Ti and GTX 1060, so no higher end cards unfortunately, and it's also UK only at this stage. Still, if you live in the UK and you want one of these graphics cards, you may as well get one with a free SSD. This story appeared in our Patreon exclusive Discord chat earlier in the week, and I thought it was pretty interesting for the more enthusiast builders out there. Overclocking Master Buildzoid published a video earlier in the week going through some of the VRM configurations on upcoming B450 motherboards, and slammed Gigabyte in particular for completely faking their 8 plus 3 phase VRM design. For those that love the technical stuff, his 50 minute long rant is worth a watch, but essentially Gigabyte's VRM VRM design actually emits one of the MOSFETs in each of the phases and doesn't use a controller that's actually 8 phase compatible, so the boards only truly use a 4 plus 3 phase design. This is despite the boards appearing to have 8 phases as 8 inductors or chokes are visible. Gigabyte has since come out and admitted their 8 plus 3 phase marketing was an error and mentioned to us via email that they will be updating their product packaging for these B450 boards to correct the error. Gigabyte's website has also been updated, removing any reference to the 8 plus 3 design for the affected boards. We'll have some performance metrics for these Gigabyte B450 boards coming next week, and it's pretty interesting stuff, so stay tuned for that one. This story came in screaming hot while I was writing up today's News Corner episode. Intel have announced that the first systems powered by 10 nanometer processors will be available in the second half of 2019, in time for the holiday season. Previously, Intel delayed mass production of 10 nanometers to some time in 2019, so this update gives some clarity on when that will actually be. And of course, it seems Intel isn't counting that one laptop with a low volume 10 nanometer chip inside when they made this statement. 14 nanometer will still play a part in 2019, with Intel stating they will have a leadership 14 nanometer product lineup for 2019, whatever that means, and 10 nanometer data center chips will come shortly after consumer chips in late 2019, though no exact time frame for that was given. Knowing Intel struggles to get 10 nanometer functioning, it'll be interesting to see how it stacks up come late 2019, and especially how it will compete with 7 nanometer tech from other foundries. Here's another Intel story for you. The company has launched new Bean Canyon NUX, yep, Bean Canyon, which pack 28 watt Coffee Lake U processors with Iris Plus graphics 655 inside. The processors include a 4 core 8 thread CPU clocked up to 4.5 GHz in the highest end, Core i7-8559U, plus the beefier 655 GPU that packs double the execution units of Intel's standard integrated graphics. The NUX also includes stuff like two sodium slots, a 2.5 inch drive bay, and some models, an M.2 2280 SSD slot, Intel Wireless AC 9560, plenty of ports including Thunderbolt 3. It's basically all the stuff you'd usually expect from a NUC. Bean Canyon won't be super powerful or anything like that, but it could be a decent solution for some use cases. These NUCs will go on sale in early August, although we don't have pricing just yet. Last week, one of our headline stories was the problems with the latest MacBook Pro, specifically throttling concerns. Well, this week, Apple has released a software update that addresses some of these issues. Apple claims a missing digital key in the firmware was a cause of aggressive underclocking under high loads and temperatures, and they've released a new version of Mac OS High Sierra to fix that. Now, digital key sounds like a load of crap to me, but the patch does actually modify how the CPU behaves under load, and as a result, performance is noticeably improved. It's still not at the level you'd expect from a properly cooled Core i9 processor in a larger laptop, so Apple's thermal design is still restricting the processor somewhat, but at least it's not throttling as aggressively. AMD's Ryzen 5 2500X has appeared in an OEM system from Acer. The 2500X hasn't been officially announced by AMD just yet, but it's expected to be a 4-core, 8-thread CPU clocked at 3.6GHz with a boost clock of 4.0GHz. The CPU should launch soon alongside a Ryzen 3 2300X, so it's probably a mistake on Acer's part to put up this new Nitro N5100 system ahead of time. 
De Nouveau, makers of the world's most aggressive and effective anti-piracy solution for games, has sued the founder of piracy group Revolt, who were the first to crack the technology. Through the help of Bulgaria's police, the founder was allegedly identified as Arka Voxy, probably a terrible pronunciation there, who had his personal PC seized among other things. Voxy said he would stop his De Nouveau cracking efforts immediately as a result of the legal action. It'll be interesting to see how that legal case ends up and whether Voxy actually broke any laws in his efforts to remove De Nouveau from games. Final news topic from this week, the guys over at PC Gamer have tested Monster Hunter World on PC and found it was quite demanding, so prepare your systems for what could be a tough game to run. One of their editors had a GTX 980 Ti and using the high preset at 1440p delivered under 60 FPS and another had a 7700HQ laptop with a GTX 1070 and got around 45 FPS on the highest preset at 1080p. Of course, we'll take a Look at how the game performs across a wider range of hardware around its launch on August 9th. That's it for this week's News Corner. If you like this segment, consider subscribing to get it in your inbox every Friday and hit that bell icon so YouTube actually bothers to tell you about it. Also, we have a Patreon exclusive Discord chat, which is a great place to chat with us about this news throughout the week. And I will catch you in the next one.